Hello, friends. Today, I am going to need a little bit of your cooperation because you and I are diving into my imaginary art museum. Let's say I live in this mysterious antique manor. There's a botanical garden, there's a great library, and of course, there's an art gallery. Well, that's where we are heading today, so let's go. Now, let me introduce to you the first piece by Cute Mew. I like the warmth and coziness of this piece. It's the atmosphere of a, an autumn evening. You are making dinner after a freezing walk outside and there's the smell of a good comforting meal that you're gonna share with your loved ones. This painting oozes good vibes and good energy and it reminds me of winter holidays spent with my family. Next up, if you want to immerse yourself in a fantasy world full of fairies, I think Mizuki art has exactly what you need. Their art exudes magic. I love the unevenness of the line art. I love the way they draw facial features. And I love the little glimpse of enchantment they put in every piece they make. Another artist I like a lot is Cosmic Spectrum. Their art feels very mythical and magical, maybe not this piece, but overall when I look at their artworks, it feels like I am in a dark, gothic, bewitched forest. And also, they have published a comic book, I think, that is called Grimoire Noir, and I would love to read it. Moving on to Ampre. She is so meticulous in everything she paints. When you look at it closely, there are actually hundreds of brush strokes everywhere, which is what gives depth and texture to her paintings, but it's really magnificent. I have to say, I am very fond of the dodos she made on this piece. Like, I really like them. <laughs> Now, I'd like to introduce an artist who is probably my favorite one at the moment, and it is a no one else than Chris Hung Hart. I feel like they have become a reference. Their artworks are just mesmerizing. They have developed a brushstroke, an art style that's very personal and recognizable, and I love the glimpse of magic they pour in each painting. And they mainly use watercolor and colored pencil, and I have to say that they might be a tiny little bit responsible for making me buy a bunch of polychromos because I really want to try them out after seeing what they can do with these color pencils. Okay, so there are two reasons for why I chose to put this painting here. Painting by Lorna Kelleher Art, by the way. The first one is because the lady in orange reminds me a lot of the actress who plays Nairobi in La Casa de Papel or Money Heist, I think we say. The second one is that I love the uniqueness a monochromatic painting holds. It's like choosing the right tone, the right shade of a color and arranging them a certain way can turn into such amazing pieces and portraits. It's mind blowing, I love it. Next, we have a drawing by Blue Birdie, and I actually own a book illustrated by this artist, a book which I must admit I bought only based on the author and the book cover. This is the book I am talking about and the illustrations inside are marvelous. Their art reminds me a lot of books my mother and father used to read me when I was a child. And I love the world they're creating, lots of nature, lots of fairies. It's very immersive. Moving on, I selected this beautiful artwork by Petizio because first of all, I love the warm tones and second of all, I love sewing and the mess in this piece is very much accurate to what my sewing play, sewing environment looks like when I'm in action. Plus, all the characters she draws have exaggerated proportions and I find it very pure and wholesome. 
So I am always in O when I find an artist who manages to represent exactly things I picture in my mind and Salulilu Art does such an amazing job with that. I love the way they mixed in this painting somehow a sci-fi world with a fantasy world and the work behind this world building is incredible. Now here is a head's portrait by Lois Phoebe and what I find very interesting with this artist is the versatility and the diversity of her art. She uses a multitude of media, she draws landscapes as well as portraits or animals and she masters them all. Sometimes she paints traditionally, sometimes digitally, one day she do a total black and white piece and the next it's going to be in total contrast because of the abundance of colors and I have to say it's very pleasant for the viewer. So one thing I literally adore are cluttered backgrounds. I could spend hours looking at them, diving deeply into them and looking for each object the artist hid. Honestly, the messier the painting, the happier I am and the warm tones of this one make it even more perfect. And just this feeling of almost being a part of it, it's so cool. Dumana is another artist who is very great at world building and drawing fantasy scenes. Her art has a lot of different aspects, yet everything she does is always executed to perfection. This one is a very recent find. It's an artist I just discovered, it's Grampolin, and I especially love the traditional style, the cluttered background obviously, and the fact that nothing seems too sharp or aggressive. It's all very soft, very smooth and delicate, and peaceful and quiet, and I find it very soothing to look at. Moving on to a listen Alitha illustration and for this artist I picked this painting but really I could have chosen any. I absolutely love the way they manage to represent the simplicity of daily times and transform them into memorable pieces. I think their strength lies in their ability through their art to make us think of these little slices of life and realize how pure and wholesome a moment can be. Another artist I love is Lemon Guasha and I actually have a little anecdote for this one. I think I once replied to one of their stories on Instagram and the first thing they told me was that we were almost twins since we almost had the same name. Anyway, she has such a beautiful colorful color palette. She seems to play with colors with no fear at all. She mixes a little bit of all of them and each time the painting turns out so good. And she's also a fashion student, so she adds a very interesting fashion aspect to her compositions and her ideas are amazing. Next up, we have this drawing drawn by Josh Art and I believe it is a great piece to study. There is a fantastic interplay of lights. I think the artist mastered the shadows reflecting on the clothing and also the way they drew the facial features to create this very unique expression I think is impressive. What I love most about this artist is his ability to create such wonderful pieces with the most simple and basic tools. A piece of paper, a pencil and voila! Let's keep going and here I have this little fairy by Gret Lutsky, which makes me think of Tinkerbell by the way. The little fat toad is adorable and I love the fact that they always put vibrant colors which makes their art very joyful and very pleasant to look at. Also, I feel like their art style is like the upgraded version of the DC comic style and I really wouldn't be surprised if at some point I found their name written on a DC comic book. 
Okay, so this one is made by an artist called Moon underscore MXTR and I believe it could belong to what we call concept art. I am really amazed by the complexity of this piece. Just the myriad of details, the vivid colors, all that added to the delicacy of the facial features it really has a whiff of peacefulness. I think that it's the kind of art that makes you really think and is open to interpretation, which is nice sometimes. On a totally different note, there is this piece by Happy Bun, who has the exact perfect art style I love to see in shoujo manga. It is the very essence of cuteness, the pastel colors, the brush strokes that are very soft. Everything makes the characters look very soft and calm. Again, the perfect combo for a shoujo manga. So remember how I told you to imagine I was living in this antique, mysterious manner? Well, if someday, for some reason, I had to move out, I would like to live in one of these houses. I'm not complicated, any of them will do. Honestly, these are so, so dreamy, and the artist, who is Koishiro Kashima, likes to call them the bean houses, which I think suits perfectly. Also, apparently, he says that these houses should never be exposed to rain or else sprouts will start to grow out of it and will become so heavy that the house is split in half. It is quite dangerous indeed, but that is a risk I am willing to take. Last but certainly not least, here is a piece by Paloma the Peach. The proportion of the arm might seem a little bit grotesque, yet it makes such a cohesive whole with the rest of the artwork. Paloma sticks to an overall simple shaping, but there's always something that somehow makes the painting theirs and lets you know it's their hand. Plus, they use lots of colors and you might have guessed by now, it is something I am very fond of. Well, our beautiful visit has come to an end and now I would love to know who your favorite artists are, who inspires you. I thank you so very much for sharing this time with me and I hope you enjoyed. Sweet kisses!